everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today we're making Cajun Smoked Pork Riettes. So a pork riette is essentially potted meat. What we're going to do is we're going to take a fatty piece of pork butt and we're going to braise it on the smoker for about four or five hours until it's super tender. We're going to process it a little bit further, get it potted in our jars, and cap it with a little bit of fat. Now to get that Cajun flair in there, we're going to start by building a shrimp stock. Let's get started. So to build our stock, we're going to build it all in the Instant Pot today. We're going to start with sauteing. One quarter cup of clarified butter, or ghee in this case followed by a pound of shrimp and about a quarter pound of some shrimp tails that I've had Chef Tom save for me. What a nice guy. So we're just going to saute these until they're all cooked through and we really extract a lot of that crustacean flavor. So we're using the shells to get maximum flavor for this stock. Now you don't necessarily have to use shrimp, you can use uh, any sort of crustacean like lobster for instance. Um, the shells just really pack a lot of flavor. Um, if you don't have leftover shells hanging out, you can absolutely use just regular shrimp with the heads on as preferred, that way you can get a lot of flavor out of those heads. All right, so once we've got enough color on those, I'm just going to remove them for a little bit and set them aside while we build our other flavors. All right, now we're going to add a cup of diced white onion, a half cup of celery, a half cup of bell pepper, and a quarter cup of leeks. We're going to get those sauteed until they're translucent, nice and softened before we add the next ingredient. So next we're going to add about a tablespoon or two of tomato paste. And we'll just continue building these flavors. We're looking to get a very aromatic cooked tomato smell, but just be careful not to burn it. So now we're going to deglaze with about a third quarter of a cup of dry vermouth. And we'll just lift up all that fond off the bottom of the pan. We'll add our shrimp back. And add about two or three tablespoons of this Boudreaux's Cajun seasoning. Get that all mixed together and mingling nice and well in the pan. And then we'll add about one kilogram or four and a half cups of water. Now we'll put the lid on and set the pressure to cook on high for about one hour and we'll make sure our vent is set to seal. So after that hour has elapsed, we'll allow the Instant Pot to go to the keep warm setting and do a 10 minute natural release. Um, after that 10 minutes on the keep warm setting, we'll just release all of the steam. It's been 10 minutes now, we're gonna release the steam. All those Cajun flavors are just exploding out of here right now. It smells delicious. So unfortunately all of this shrimp has just been obliterated and is probably a little too tough and chewy to enjoy. But that's the sacrifice we make for great food. And we're just using a fine mesh strainer here to catch everything. So hopefully if you did this right, you'll get about a quart's worth of stock, which is all you'll need for the next step. All right, so now I'm going to put this in the fridge and we're just going to revisit the riettes tomorrow. So here we are, day two, 
and we're ready to work on our pork butt. Now obviously we don't have to chill the shrimp stock before we move on to this part, but just with the timing of things, that's how it worked out. All right, so for this pork butt, I only need about three pounds. So I'm just gonna start by trimming off strips and getting it about three pounds weight out. So that's just a little over three pounds right there. Let's get it cut into cubes. So I'm looking for about three quarter inch sized cubes. That way all of my flavors can wrap around. I find that working with a really fatty pork butt is ideal for this. Um, but traditionally, a rillette was made with old sow meat. Now, the reason why they would use the sow meat is to be resourceful. And so they would braise this older, tougher meat and then mix it with lots of rendered fat to get a usable product. Now, we're lucky we can just use fresh, young pork butt that's very fatty, so we don't have to add too much extra fat, but we will be adding some rendered bacon fat later for a more smoky flavor. So once you're all cubed up here, I'm just gonna get it into a little shallow pan. And we're gonna season it with about five tablespoons, give or take, of this Boudreaux's Cajun seasoning. So it's got everything in there to give it that Cajun flair. Just gonna massage it in. And let that seasoning really adhere while we prep our vegetables. For our braise, we're going to use the Trinity, which is onion, bell pepper, and celery. We're also gonna add a big punch of garlic, and we'll build our flavors right in a Dutch oven. So we're just going for about a medium dice. I love this Nakiri knife from Wistoff. It's just perfect for vegetable prep. It's got a nice thin, flat blade. And we're just gonna measure out about a cup's worth here, which for a large onion, that's about half of one. Next, we'll chop up some celery. And we're looking for about a half cup there. Next, we're gonna do some bell pepper, which I already sliced off a bit for our shrimp stock that we made. So in Cajun cooking, instead of using a standard mirepoix, which is carrots, onion, and celery, we're using onion, celery, and bell pepper. And it just creates a different flavor profile, but one that is uniquely sort of Cajun. Using different colored peppers is gonna give you different flavors. I just enjoy the sweetness coming out of the orange. Green obviously gives you a little more of an astringent bite. It's just whatever you prefer. And just about a half cup is all you need there. Okay, now we're just gonna mince this garlic. I've got about eight cloves here, and I'm just gonna go real rough with it. I'm not trying to get fancy with my cuts here. We're just gonna come through and mince it. I'll just put that right on top. Next, we're going to dice up a pound of bacon. And this is really gonna give a good smoky flavor and also lend some more of its own fat to help break down and braise our butt. So we're gonna just start by rendering out some of this bacon fat. So once the bacon starts to render out its fat here, we're gonna add the vegetables. And we're gonna follow up with our pork butt. We'll add a quart of our shrimp stock. And 
and there's a little bit of that clarified butter that's settled. We'll go ahead and add that in too. Absolutely cannot hurt. We're also gonna add about five or six bay leaves. And last but not least, we're gonna add about eight ounces of rendered bacon fat, which isn't easy to come across unless you're cooking a lot of bacon, but it turns out that a lot of grocery stores are starting to carry it, so kind of interesting. So I'm gonna cut the heat. From here, I'm just gonna make sure everything is fully submerged. Let's head out to the smoker. All right, so today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S. We've got it set to 300 degrees and stocked full of pecan pellets. All right, so we're gonna place it on the bottom rack here. Now we're gonna keep it open and that's gonna maximize how much smoke adheres to the surface of this. And the uh, bacon fat that we put on there is really gonna help pull all of that smoke in. All right, so we're gonna let that braise for about four or five hours. We're gonna come back every hour and just give it a turn, give it a look and make sure everything maintains being submerged. So it's been about a couple hours, let's give it a look. All right, so it's bubbling, it's deepened in color. Just gonna give it a good stir, redistribute everything. Just make sure that it's good and submerged and there's plenty of liquid. If for whatever reason it's drying out, feel free to add a little more stock if you have any, or just some water. All right, so it's been about four and a half hours, let's give it a look. All right, so we've lost a little moisture here. Got a great deep color. All right, so now I'm just gonna check the tenderness. I'm gonna find a good sizable chunk of pork and I can just smash it easily. So this is ready to go. All right, so now that the pork is fully cooked, we're gonna go ahead and strain all of the liquid and the fat, separate it from the meat, and then we're gonna blend it. First things first, I'm gonna pull out the bay leaves. If I remember correctly, there's six in there. It smells like a big old porky batch of gumbo. There we go. The aroma is coming off this is crazy right now. And the meat's practically just falling apart as I try and scoop it in. So now we're just gonna push a lot of that liquid through the sieve here until it's a fairly dry mix. Now we're gonna probably add some more liquid back into it, but we're just gonna get it mostly sifted through at this point. All right, now to get this mixture into the blender. All right, for a little punch of flavor, a little French flair. We're gonna add about a quarter cup of some cognac or brandy of your choice. We'll just blend this just a little bit. It should be shredding apart so simply. So you can kind of go as far as you want. Um, I like mine a little more broken down. I'm just gonna get a little bit of a mixture of both the broth and the fat in here. Just a little splash. All right, so we're kind of just emulsifying a lot of this fat into this meat. Now, we're looking for it to be a spreadable consistency overall, and I'd say we're pretty much there. You're gonna just have to feel this one out. You can do this step in a food processor or a mixer, or if you really want to, by hand, but we're looking for something like this. I've got quite a bit of mixture here. So we'll see how many ramekins I can fill out. All right, and I'm just trying to get all of the air out. I'm trying to get the mixture into the corners of the ramekin and I wanna leave enough head space for a layer of fat to lay on top. All right, next I'm gonna just tap out any excess air that may have just found its way. 
in there. All right, so before moving on to the next step, I just want to ensure that you guys know that you want to let this meat mixture kind of cool to room temperature before you cap it with fat. And that's to help allow the fat to settle evenly and not kind of frumple as it cools. So if you let it cool, it will just have a nice clean presentation in the end. Okay, so just skimming a little bit of this fat off the top. You can kind of go as nuts as far as how much fat you want to put on here as you like, but I like just enough to cover the meat. It has a beautiful red color. I'm really excited to see how these turn out once they solidify. And then for a little extra flair on presentation, I'm just going to do a little sprinkle of this Boudreaux's Cajun seasoning right over the top. And that'll rehydrate in that fat and just bring out all of those wonderful colors. All right, so for now, these are headed off to the fridge to set up. All right, it's day three, guys. Uh, the riettes are set up. Let's serve it up. All right, so to finish this, I'm going to add just a little pinch of some smoked salt on top just to amplify all of those flavors. So I'm just going to set it up on a platter here. I'm going to get some other condiments going. And I've got some toasted baguette. I'm gonna get some of this Kalsix Triple Crunch Mustard Seed. This is a really great condiment for any charcuterie board. And then we'll also do a little bit of this beautiful Southern style Chow Chow, also from Boudreaux's to go along with our Cajun theme here. Look at that. It's like pork butter. Get a little chow chow on there for some acidity, some sweetness. A little bit of this mustard. Yum. Mmm. I'm going to put a little bit more of this riad on there. There's a ton of flavor coming off that. It definitely feels Cajun from the, the shrimp stock. It's so smooth from the pork fat. All the accoutrement really just amplifies it and makes it more fun. But man, you definitely should try this. All right, so obviously you don't need three days to make this happen. That's just what worked with our schedule. You can do this all in one day. Um, one thing to note though, it does make eight eight ounce portions, which is quite a hefty amount for one person or even one family. Um, luckily they last very well in the fridge for up to a few weeks, I would say. Um, also you can store them in the freezer for up to a few months. Just make sure they're well coated with some plastic wrap and just airtight. Another thing to note before you serve these, you'll want to just make sure that they're about at room temperature. So pulling them out of the fridge an hour beforehand is perfect. That will allow the pork fat to really become spreadable and much more enjoyable. So that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you see, head on over to atbbq.com to see all of the products that we use today. And if you want to see more tips, recipes, and techniques, head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.